Welcome back to KP Ready Unpacked. Uh, this is my opportunity to ask KP Ready every week about one of the things that he posted on LinkedIn. I say, hey, KP, what were you thinking when you posted that on LinkedIn? If you're not following KP Ready, the CEO and founder of Shadow Ventures and Shadow Partners, you ought to be. That's my first question is, why aren't you? You need to go over to LinkedIn, type in KP, and then Ready, R-E-D-D-Y, and um, take advantage of what KP sees and hears and what he thinks about as he travels around, as he works with some of the, the uh, largest, most influential AEC firms in the world. And uh, sometimes he's traveling, sometimes he's speaking to students, which I think we'll talk about today. And uh, many times he's talking to our clients and our collaborators. So it's really interesting to see where, um, where the inspiration for his LinkedIn post come from. So obviously I am joined today by KP. Welcome KP. Hey Jeff. Glad that you're here today. I'm looking forward to unpacking this when it comes from your travels last week in New York. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jeff Eccles. I'm a senior advisor and the head of marketing here at Shadow Partners. And again, this is, I said this before we went live. This is, this is really a selfish endeavor because this is my time to pick KP's brain really is what's going on here. So um, I always look forward to unpacking one of these LinkedIn posts. So um, KP, you posted this about a week ago, I guess is where we're recording this. And it was on the heels of you being in New York, speaking at um, NYU in Columbia last week to your classes. So I'll just read it. And then, um, and then we can kind of go back and unpack what needs to be unpacked here. Here's how it goes. It says, in one of my classes this week, I had a student come up to me and ask me how to overcome fear of failure. They had a distraught look on their face. So as someone that teaches at university, I see that all the time as well. <laughs> that distraught look, right? It's like, how do you get beyond this fear of failure? So KP goes on to say, I gave him a few pointers, but it was a tough environment to have a real conversation. In fact, here are some thoughts. Please comment if you have any tips. So here's, here's a great call to action. Go over to LinkedIn, read this post and add your comments below. You know, whatever you think about these tips that KP shared, drop them in the comment section there on LinkedIn. So tip number one from KP, we have plenty of failures on any given day. Hopefully, not all big ones, but nonetheless, they occur. Write them down. This was the failure. Here's how I overcame it. Here was the lesson to be learned. If you didn't overcome the failure, then what were the results and the outcomes of the failure? And what did you learn from that? Number two, when you have fear of failure on an upcoming project, etc., look back at what you wrote down. It's a great reminder that you have been here before and have been able to move on after a failure. Number three, some failures are externally driven, i.e. you have no control over it. However, you can improve your ability to see early signals of those threats and mitigate early. Number four, reflect and acknowledge your role in the failure. Sometimes a pattern emerges. This pattern may determine a skill or capability that you need to improve upon or get support around. Number five. Talk about your failures openly. It's tough, but the more you do, the more comfortable you get. Well, it's been a great week in New York City. Met some old friends, made some new ones. Taught classes at NYU in Columbia. I love working with students. The force multiplier effect of teaching students is so impactful. I still have students from Georgia Tech out from 13 years ago that I connect with. So um, I think that's a great post. I think that's an important post. There's a lot to learn from that. Um, how do we unpack that? Where do you want to start? Yeah, I think, you know, contextually too, this was a master's class at Columbia. Um, so, you know, if you're doing your master, you're doing your MBA at Columbia, pretty good chance you've been pretty successful in your academic career, right? And I think um, some of the challenges when you have people that are academically that have done, had a great academic career and uh, are going to these high end, you know, Ivy League school and been very successful. Um, they probably haven't had a lot of failures along the way. You know, they, they probably scored perfect on their SAT. And I'm, I'm hypothesizing, but 
you know, contextually, this is not someone that has probably failed a lot. And, um, and I think when you don't fail a lot, you don't really have the scar tissue to be somewhat resilient uh, and, and react in a, in a, in a, appropriate way when you do fail. So I, I thought, I thought it was fascinating just because, I mean, when I talk about like distraught, I thought he was going to like cry distraught and right there in front of the class. Yeah. And I think as people see shifts in business environments, she shifts in their own personal lives. They, they start to realize that like, you have to kind of challenge yourself. And I think at some point too, um, you reach an age, I think the age is about 32, <laughs> where you start to realize that there's things that you cannot, like you can't do anymore. Like you just cannot, it's no longer in the cards. You're either too far along, whatever it is, you're, you know, it's just not in the cards anymore. And I think you then start to learn how to process regret. Mm. You know, I wish I had taken that chance. I wish I had taken that, you know, instead of taking the safe bet with my career, I should have taken that internship in Tokyo, like whatever it is. Right. And so I think as you get older, you start to realize like, um, you go from being good to process fear and then you get good at processing regret because mm. like, I wish I had done that. I wish, you know, you, you start living in that world. So I think they, they tend to go hand in hand in many ways, because I think if you don't try, there's a good chance you're, you're going to regret it later. Um, and you're not going to regret whether you were successful or not. You're just going to regret that you didn't even try. Um, so I think, you know, most of my audience and people I deal with every day, you know, they're startups and, you know, I think it's really hard to be a founder. I mean, it's, it's hard to be a founder anyway, mm -hmm. but it's also hard to be a founder um, knowing that you will fail. And I do think you get good at it. Uh, I do think you get good at reacting at it. So I think some of it, like many things, is um, you get better at things through repetition. Mm -hmm. And I think for some people, like, the, you know, the kid the other day, he was pretty tepid. Like, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I don't know that I'd uh, put him through any kind of psychological challenges, right? Now. It was just like, it was, he was in a bad place. Clearly something, some, you know, more likely something else was going on. I, I don't think my lecture was that moving. So to speak. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Crushing the hopes and dreams. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I, I think it was much more optimistic than that. So I, I, I bet is something, maybe he's struggling with one of his classes and he's gonna fail it like you know but um i think it's it's tough in startup world and you know and, and i tell people like man what's your next best move that's all you got yeah. um if you if you're gonna stay stagnant in the failure and um and sit there and just you know stuck in the mud puddle mud puddle of failure you're, you're never gonna get better at it so it's always about like what's your best next best move I also think, um, I think I mentioned in the post, like writing stuff down is really helpful. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. You know, uh, I joke around that, you know, people say, man, you're on LinkedIn a lot. I'm like, I'm on LinkedIn as often as your kids on TikTok. Yeah, sure. Like I'm <laughs> on all the time. But I tend to process a lot of my stuff in public. You know, I do process a lot of the thing, my thoughts and thinking in public. It's... Uh, I was thinking about it the other day, like I don't need to keep a journal. Someone, when I die, someone can just go collate all my LinkedIn <laughs> posts, right? It probably tells you a lot about what was going on. But I do think writing stuff down and understanding, you know, that you failed. Here's what happened. Here's what the outcome was. Here's what I did next. Because sometimes the failures that you're experiencing currently just feel like uh, unbelievable. Like you just cannot overcome them. Like, Life will never be the change. It's going to be that big a deal. And then when you go back and kind of reminisce on your previous failures, you realize like, oh, this actually isn't that bad compared to when that happened. Um, and so I think it's just, it's a good exercise to write things down so you can go back and, and realize that. 
And then I think the other advice was just like, talk about it, you know, talk about like to your peers, to your, I mean, one of the things I was, I was just on a podcast before this, it's been a very busy day. Um, and we were talking about, you know, founders versus CEOs. And I was like, I have this position that hardly any founders are actually CEOs. <laughs> Right. Right. They don't really have the, they're, they're learning to be a CEO. They're not actually a CEO. They're not in contention to replace Bob Iger anytime soon. Right. Like that's not, that's, that's not who these people are. They're developing the skills to be, and, and hopefully their personal growth will stay a step ahead of their, of their company's growth. In other words, can they grow ahead of, yeah. uh, ahead of their company and become the CEO of their own company, or are they going to get replaced? Which happens a lot. Mm -hmm. quite honestly. It happens more often than people realize but you'll always be a founder. Like you'll always be a founder. And one of the things you can do as a founder and leading teams as a founder is sharing the failure, sharing your fears mm -hmm. and knowing that your team has their back, has your back, like, you know, that they're going to help you solve for it. But I think culturally, the more people talk about these topics to their teams, the better, mm -hmm. You know, I get asked, it's weird. I don't, I don't consider myself like this culture wizard. I just kind of do the things I do and people go, wow, can you come talk? You know, I have CEOs. Can you come talk to my leadership team of culture? And I'm like, I, mean, I guess, like, I don't, I don't have a PhD in this stuff. Like, I don't, I, mean, I feel like there's people better equipped and they're just like, no, you're great at telling stories and you're great at being vulnerable. And I'm trying to get my, my team to be better storytellers and be more vulnerable about about what they do so they can be better leaders. Um, and so it's, it's really interesting. You know, when you think about these cycles of change, you know, and, and I've been pretty big advocating like, hey, look, we're in, we're at the early innings of an AI super cycle, but it is a super cycle. It's not a hype cycle. It's not any of those other cycles. It's, it's the real deal. Um, people are afraid. And I think the best way you get people aligned is to, as a leader is to talk about your failures and what happened and go from there and move on. And I think the more you can talk about, it, I think it's, it's almost of as much as it's cathartic for you to share your failures and speak, you know, just like going to therapy, half of it's not, not what the therapist says to you. It's just the fact that you shared it, right. You said it out loud. Um, and so I think um, very similarly, I think it's as much helpful to others if you share your failures as it is for, as, it, as helpful as it is for yourself. You know, you mentioned the incubator a few minutes ago, and there are several things that come to mind related to that, um, that are, that align perfectly with what you were just saying. I think I'll go in backwards order here, but, but, you know, that idea of sharing the failure what one of the things that happens every time we have a workshop for the incubator. So we're in the cycle of this evergreen incubator right now, where every couple of weeks we have every two weeks, we have a, um, uh, a, what, what I call a workshop. So we have half a day and we bring in speakers, you know, we have a, a startup founder, we have a, a VC, we have, um, a subject matter expert to speak to whatever the topic of the day is. And then, um, the founders that are going through the incubator, they report out, right? They tell their stories, et cetera. But the, by far the most popular segment of that, when it comes to the startup world is when startup founders talk about their failures. So it's the other founders that are going through the incubator right now. They're hearing from somebody that's several steps ahead of where they are right now. Of course, they want to hear how they built it, you know, those types of things, but they want to know what went wrong mm -hmm. because they, they learn from that. Right. And so, um, I think that's very important. And one of the things that I do, you know, when we start the, each cohort of the incubator, to me, I think it's really easy to figure out who's going to excel in this incubator and who's not going to excel in this incubator by listening to the people that are convinced that they know convinced that they have the answer that they know the answer you know that they're right all of those things 
and then find the people that are there and they're open to the exploration and they're open to the learning and they're open to the doing the work. And, you know, the first version, the, the first person is the one that's not going to excel, right? They're not going to reflect, as, as you said before, um, resilience is an important thing. You, you touched on that earlier. The only way that we build resilience is to be able to exactly what you did, what you said in the post is to be able to look at those failures, those mistakes, learn from those, maybe, maybe document those, mm -hmm. you know, in, in writing or, or talking about them with your therapist or however, but, but being able to look back and reflect and then ask the questions. Okay. Where did this come from? Did I see it coming? How can I, how can I identify it earlier? Um, if I'm going on a bear hunt, how do I get over it, under it, around it, through okay. it? And, and then what do I do next time? That's, that's the, that's really the only way for us to build true resilience. And I, I love it when we deal with uh, founders, whether yes. it's the incubator or otherwise, because it's very rare that this is their first rodeo. Mm -hmm. They've they've had they've had a startup before, and this is their third or their second or their fifth, and and they're now they're applying what they learned along the way in those others. You know, the other the earlier part of their journey. Yeah. I think it's interesting you bring up the incubator um, on this topic. I feel like the, mo you know, we do a lot of things. We try a lot of things around here. <laughs> um, and then some of them have impact. Some of them don't. We, we read our, we read the market differently. think, you know, whatever. Um, I feel like this year so far, the highest impact activity that we have done has been the mastermind groups. Mm -hmm. and the ability for executives to quote unquote, sit around the table with their peers. And you're like, you and Ian are facilitating these conversations <clears throat> that are things like fear that are, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, I, you know, I was, I was on one of them and you know, the CIO said like, Hey, like, I made the decision on our big ERP implementation and we went over budget 2x and it took twice as long. <clears throat> and no one's saying it, but I feel like everybody blames me. Like, and it's like, I feel like people are talking behind my back about how I screwed this up. And for that person to be able to share like, hey, this is what's going on at work <clears throat> to others that are in those similar spots where you do make decisions. And you know, nobody's making these decisions. These are multi-billion dollar companies. Nobody's making decisions alone. But that somehow there's this inner angst that I made this decision, right? And by the way, 110% of all ERP implementations are failures. <laughs> like, there's, there is no one. I used to be in that business. I used to have an SAP consulting business. I mean, none of them go well. It's kind of like construction with no change orders. Which projects are those? <laughs> no. You know, it's like, no. It's, I mean, imagine if every project manager of a construction company felt like they were a failure because there was a change order. You know, I mean, or an owner or a developer, like, oh, there's a change order. I must be terrible. Like, no, like, that's just par for the course. And I think sometimes it takes hearing that from others that, mm -hmm. oh, man, like, let me tell you about how ours went. You thought yours was bad. Mine was, the, you know, and then the person walks away going, you know what, man, like I'm, I'm not out here on an Island. I'm not out here alone. And, and I think it's, I think that there's been a lot of impact around that, around the mastermind groups and really um, making people comfortable that whatever, you know, whether it's AI or whatever else that's your, that you're having to tackle tomorrow um, that you're in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I mean, we all, I think, tend to think that our stuff is unique, right? And it's it's just not. There's other people that are experiencing it, and and um, you know, I think back. I've got a whole stack of notes over here from from the mastermind groups that I facilitate, and it it, it surprises me, and it shouldn't, 
but what inevitably happens every time we meet is that so, so the format is we go around the table and everybody talks about what they what they did the last couple of weeks you know between now and the the previous meeting that we had and and uh you know what went well what didn't you know last last time you said you were going to be doing this how that go did you even get to it you know etc and what emerges from those conversations are themes and without fail every week or 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 every meeting somebody brings something up hey i'm working on this i'm struggling with this um just had to do this and you know it's it's a room of of um say eight eight or nine people and there are about six people in that room that have the same fear that have the same struggle that um maybe had the same failure or headed to that same failure or worried about that same failure. And it's every single week it's that. Yeah. Right. And and I, I write down as I'm taking notes, I, I, I sort of write down a theme every week. You know, this is, this is what we talked about. And it's, you know, you think, well, there's eight or nine people in the room. How do you get to one? Mm-hmm. It gets to one because everybody is sharing about separate but similar experiences and you know and and i i really do think that helps uh mentally and emotionally uh certainly professionally for people to be in that environment and say hey i'm not the only one and kp said this and he's he's struggling with this it's not the exact same but here's what i can take away from that um and and how i can build my own resilience based on on kp's experience no and it, it it's interesting because um I had a good friend of mine tell me, she's like, you know, your, your older kids are just so well adjusted. They're such good kids. They're one of them's getting ready to graduate. And there's that, that whole thing. I'm like, Oh, thanks. So I'm like, and you know, her point was just that, like, I think you have been so open and honest with them that like life, life rarely goes your way. <laughs> like it, it's how you bounce back. It's how you keep moving. Yeah. And just that, like, keep on moving. Like, just don't stop. Like, keep on moving and uh, keep trying to get better. And um, and so I think that builds a level of resilience. Um, but, no, I, I think it, it's it's tough. I think there's a lot of people that are, um, you know, the job market is getting a little soft. I'm sure, like, this MBA class, you know, uh, people aren't just showing up and giving them all job offers when they graduate and things like that. And I think um, – you know, the startup founders, of course, you know, the venture capital, I think Q1 VC was kind of all time low, like a, a very low cycle of capital deployment, um, which is probably why we're deploying more capital. I'm a little bit, if everybody's going left, I'm going right um, by nature. But um, I know it's, it's tough times for a lot of people right now. And, yeah. I, and I think also like really, I used to joke around that like, at the beginning of our incubator, we should all have to say the serenity prayer. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, because that's the life they're living, right? That is the mm-hmm. life they're living. It is like, you know, um, and it's funny because I struggle to recite it. I can't memorize it. And my wife always jokes around like, I've known you for 10 years and you cannot memorize. You memorize a lot of things. You can't memorize this. And I'm like, why do you think that is? She's like, I don't think you agree with it. I think you think you can change anything. (laughs) Well, you know, that's really funny because, you know, we put that in the context. And if you're not familiar with the serenity prayer, it's, it's something that's used in, in, uh, I think in all of the, the anonymous groups. So Alcoholics Anonymous, et cetera. And, uh, when you said that, I thought, well, yeah, I mean, most of these, most of these founders, that uh, come into the incubator are are probably you know startup addicts right? they, they've been here they've done that they're, since they're they need to stand up at the very beginning my name is jeff and i'm a i'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a startup founder <laughs> so, yeah yeah it, enter the enter the serenity prayer there but uh but but you know going, going back to the previous statement you're exactly right and I, we we may have brought this up last week i don't remember But, you know, the Mike Tyson quote, the famous Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson quote, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. 
that I mean, that's that's sort of funny in a way, uh, especially mm -hmm. coming from the character. Yeah. But um, but I think it is is completely applicable here too. It's you know you're you're at Columbia. Uh, trying to complete your MBA, you're a startup founder and an incubator, you're wherever. It's like you you have this idea, you have these goals, you have this plan mm -hmm. that at the end of the day may be completely meaningless because somebody, life, the economy, whatever is gonna is gonna punch you in the mouth. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, th th those are those are good life lessons. Yeah, a hundred percent. And yeah, look, I it, it's it's. I feel like sometimes, you know, especially when students come to me with that, even founders, um, you know, I, I, I try to be as helpful as I can, but I feel woefully ill-equipped um, to really, like, to really help. You know, it's always like, hey, maybe you should talk to somebody, <laughs> you know, I always <laughs> feel that way. Yeah. You know, I got, I got a Slack message from a founder. Uh, the other morning and I showed it to my wife and she was just like, Hey, like, do you need to like, are they okay? Mm. Like, do you need to like call them? Like, or, you know, this, cause you know, she doesn't know the person, but mm -hmm. the way she read the message, she was like, is this person okay? And I'm like, no, like, I like, I'll talk to them later. But I think this is just, you know, looking at the time of day it came through and knowing what's going on with them. I think this is just a vent. I don't, I don't think there's, there's no harm. Like there's nothing, I don't, I don't, you know, but, but it is like, you have these conversations sometimes you're like, wow. Okay. Like you're in a tough spot. And I will say like, as a VC, um, it's a weird dynamic, you know, money does not have feelings. Money is not like, I don't know. Money's a weird thing when you're in venture in general, right. Whether it's your venture capital or you're wealthy um, money is like numbers, right? It's just, it's not as, it's not, you change your point of view around money. And as a VC, I just get so focused, you know, when a founder says it's not going well, and I think they've done all the things they can, right? Maybe it was some existential threat, but who knows what's going on, right? I'm always like, well, what do you want to do next? And they always get shocked at me when I say that. I'm like, dude, my relationships with you, my, I don't have a relationship with money. Like that is not a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a relationship with you and you have gone through this process for X number of years in a very authentic way. And you worked your butt off and you did, you did all the things that doesn't mean that if, if you do all the things, it doesn't mean that the outcome is going to be positive. Um, but that doesn't mean I want, I don't want to have a continued relationship. Like, let's go start something else. Mm. Like, let's go start something else. What do you want to do next? And it's interesting how um, founders get so surprised by that attitude. Um, and because I, I think it's not unique to me. I have a mm -hmm. lot of VC friends and I think we all have the same attitude that, um, you know, if you look at like, who's a Stuart butter steward over at Slack, when he first started Slack, it had nothing, to, it looked nothing like Slack. It was a gaming company. And I remember sitting next to Stuart at South by Southwest one year, um, which everybody gathers at the Four Seasons Hotel because that's where you know people be seen. And he's sitting there like hammering code out. And I'm like sitting at a table with him and like the CMO for Apple and L'Oreal, like all these like big names and Stuart's like doing this, right? <laughs> he's just on the keyboard. Um, but you know, most of the people that backed him, like his previous endeavors, they he failed, right? He was a failure. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's just like, well, you know, it doesn't mean you're not talented. You know, yeah. um, I'm sorry, you know, like uh, you could, Tom Brady could join the Atlanta Falcons. We're still not going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 I don't care how good he is. <laughs> uh, it, well, <laughs> you say the same thing about a lot of teams, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, my point is that I think, um, People have to realize, like, look, this is these are projects. I've been hating mm -hmm. calling them companies on anything. Just like it's like they're not CEOs, they're founders, and these yep. are projects. And right. if a project doesn't go well, you do do the next project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, none of these things are terminal, right? I mean, it's it's. Uh, I I have grown to dislike the term the journey, but it's part of of the journey. Yeah. Um, 
yeah. So and the, this, so we've got two old guys <laughs> sitting here talking about this, right? And and all of this stems from a conversation with a student who my guess is was maybe in their mid twenties or something right. like that. But um, uh, if if somehow you landed here towards the end of this conversation, um, what we're doing right now is unpacking one of KP's posts on LinkedIn. So again, if you don't follow KP Ready on LinkedIn, you need to go over there and look up KP Ready, R-E-D-D-Y, and follow him because you get a lot of really insightful posts, some of them very inspiring, some of them instructional, um, some of them very reflective, et cetera. And um, this post is one that, uh, that KP uh, put up while he was in New York last week. So uh, let me read the post one more time, and um, and then we can uh, we can wrap this up. It says in in one of my classes this week, I had a student come up to me and ask me how to overcome fear of failure. They had a distraught look on their face. I gave them a few pointers, but it was a tough environment to have a real conversation. In reflection, here are some thoughts. Number one, we have plenty of failures on any given day. Hopefully, not all big ones. But nonetheless, they occur. Write them down. This was the failure. Here's how I overcame it. And here's the lesson to be learned. If you didn't overcome the failure, then what were the results and the outcomes of the failure? And what did you learn? Number two, when you have fear of failure on an, um, on an upcoming project, look back at what you wrote down. It's a great reminder that you've been here before and you've been able to move on after a failure. Number three, some failures are externally driven, i.e. you have no control over it. However, you can improve your ability to see early signals of these threats and mitigate them early. Number four, reflect and acknowledge your role in the failure. Sometimes a pattern emerges. This pattern may determine a skill or capability that you need to improve upon or maybe get support around. And number five, talk about your failures openly. It's tough, but the more you do, the more comfortable you get. So, uh, KP, thanks for sharing this post, first of all, and, uh, uh, you know, helping letting all of us sort of learn a little bit from, from this interaction that you had with the student. And, um, and again, for those of you out there, make sure you're following KP. This is a great opportunity for me to ask KP, you know, what, what's, what's the inspiration? What's, what drives this particular story? And, uh, I'm glad you're able to join in with this, whether you're watching this live as we record it or some recorded version, either on the, the shadow network podcast or here inside the catalyst network, uh, which is our community on circle. So, uh, KP, thanks again for sharing this. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to doing this again next week. All right. We'll see you, Jeff. Thanks.